In our last video, we got to the 1600 block of military uh, on the southeast corner, and we looked at this uh, car barn right here, the street cars or trolleys, however you want to call them, uh, is where their barn was in storage and facilities for repair and painting was. We also looked at the early street cars of Portia, mainly the horse cars, which is pictured here. The horse cars weren't without their problems, mainly the horses. Horses were very prone to diseases, and in some cities, uh, when the disease occurred, it stopped the whole transportation system. Also, the horses didn't live very long. It was tough on the horses. And for the folks walking the streets, you had to be very careful where you step. The solution to all these problems was the electric streetcar. In the late 1800s, electric motor technology was perfected. The street railway industry immediately seized upon this new source of power as a way to solve the many problems associated with the operating horse cars. A lot of people want to take credit for the first street car in, in the United States. Uh, most uh, places would say it was Richmond, Virginia in 1887. And some say it was Detroit uh, in 1886. This is what William Jenks said, who was a Port Huron historian. He said this in 1912. In 1883, Port Huron Railway Company, who ran the horse cars at that time, had the remarkable foresight to ask permission to operate cars by electric power. Although at the time there was no electric railway in commercial operation any place in the world. It was not until 1886 that this permission was utilized. In August of that year, the Port Huron Electric Railway Company was organized and bought out the rights and franchises of the other company, obtained new franchises, and proceeded to install an electrical system. This was the first established street railway in Michigan to establish a streetcar line with electrical power. In the same year, 1886, a short line was built on Dix Avenue in Detroit and operated for a few months. Prior to this, uh, Windsor, Ontario also had a streetcar that was run by electricity. The Port Huron Company was certainly a pioneer in this line and is probably the second streetcar line on this continent that can show a continuous use of electricity as motive power from as early a time as the fall of 1886. That's what the historian William Jinks had to say. So regardless, Port Huron was certainly one of the first uh, in the country to have electrical power in their streetcars. It was well before the time that Richmond first claimed credit for the electrical streetcar. And in 1886, Detroit operated the electric streetcar on one street only. The last few photographs you've been looking at have been taken on Military Street, which was quite a busy through fare for the streetcars, as a couple of the pictures uh, you looked at. There were two or three sometimes at a time, uh, right behind each other or beside each other. Of course, the streetcars in those days uh, competed with the horse and carriage, as you can see here. And look at the people downtown. The Port Huron was just a bustling on the sidewalks. And, and these two ladies here that look like they're either trying to catch the streetcar or get hit by it. That was one of the disadvantages of a streetcar. Uh, they didn't come to the curb and pick you up. You had to go out there and meet it. This also was taken on Military Street looking south. You can see the Opera House sign on the right and uh, the streetcar coming down the middle of the road. You can also see the curvature of the track, which means that that would have gone down Water Street then. Here we see a little bit of a traffic jam, mainly because the circus has come to town and they're driving right down Military going south. And you can see there, uh, coming down the tracks, there's two, maybe three streetcars uh, in a row uh, waiting to get by. And there's one, two, three, four horse-drawn wagons for the circus. And of course you have the circus gawkers along the sidewalk. I'm sure they were looking at the wagons, and most of those wagons probably had animals in them. Once the automobile became quite popular, there was... Uh, a little bit more traffic on Military Street. You can see the streetcar way in the distance coming south on Military Street. This would have been taken, oh, just south of Pine Street, uh, looking north. 
This photo here, that building with the stairs going up the side is actually on the corner of Pine and Military Street, which looks like this today. The streetcar tracks used to curve around off of Military and go down Pine Street, and you can see in this photograph that uh, those streetcar tracks are going down Pine Street. You can see how they curve around and, and go off to the left. The streetcar wouldn't go very far down Pine, only about a half a block. And then they would go on uh, Customs House Avenue, according to this diagram, make the loop and go back on water and then back on military, going back the opposite way. I'm not sure when that loop went into effect. I know the early photos that I have don't show it but probably by the 1920s, I would imagine. This map from 1911 shows where it was. You can see here it's called Custom Place. But when I was growing up, we just called it Customs Alley. And it looked like this at that time. That's Troy Laundry on the left and Railway Express on the right. It wasn't a very big street, uh, and it's not there anymore. But today it would have been right about here. This is what Water Street would have looked like in the late 1800s, and you can see the uh, streetcar tracks going down toward Military Street. And here you can actually see the streetcar on Water Street. This photograph here, you not only see the streetcar on Water Street, but you see something else I think is quite interesting, and, and I don't see very many photos of this, and that's the fountain in front of the Customs House. You see many pictures with the uh, fountain, but very few where it's in all its glory with the water flowing out of it like it is here. And here you see it in color. This is a postcard from around the late 1800s. And this postcard here would be about the same period of time, but this next one that you see is a little bit later. You can see automobiles here along with the streetcar. The next photograph we want to look at is taken at this location here, uh, going down the pier, going west, and this is at the 7th Street uh, intersection. And that green section you see over there where the condos are further down, that used to be a road that was uh, Water Street that went right down uh, toward uh, the river or along the river at an angle. And sort of a V, and of course the Loft Hotel was on the uh, very peak of that V. And here's a photograph here with the streetcar. This, uh, this streetcar here is going to South Park, as you can see. And these tracks extended all the way down to 24th Street and then uh, over to South Park. And of course, there's the Loft Hotel that I told you about earlier. This photograph here was taken on Lapeer as well, down about uh, 11th Street. And you can see it was taken after a very heavy rain. Before we leave Military Street, uh, when they were doing renovations of uh, Military Street and tearing it up, uh, they found these streetcar tracks, and of course, right here you can see them all tangled up, but I sure would have liked to have had a piece of one of those uh, tracks. And then here's basically the same thing on Huron Avenue. Uh, as you zoom in here, you can actually see the tracks are where they were, and also the, the bricks that uh, constituted the pavement at the time. There was actually two sets of tracks going down here in Avenue, as you can see in this postcard here. You have to remember to get electricity to the streetcars from the powerhouse where it was generated. An overhead wire was installed over the city streets. A streetcar would touch the electric wire with a long pole called a trolley pole that we mentioned before that was on its roof. And at the powerhouse, big steam engines would turn huge generators to produce electricity needed to operate the streetcars. The challenge was, how do we get those streetcars over Black River? How do we get them over the bridge? Well, as you can see from this early postcard, uh, they did. You can see the streetcar in the distance, but you can see uh, the Military Street Bridge, and here we're looking uh, north. And you can see the uh, arches, the iron arches that go above the bridge, one on each side of the jackknife bridge. Here we see the jackknife bridge open, and you think that would be a problem. You can see the wiring going to each of the uh, iron overheads. Uh, but they found a way that the electricity would continue from the wires to the streetcar, even as it went across the middle of the bridge. Fort Huron was one of the very first cities in the United States to be able to take an electric streetcar across a bridge. 
In this photograph, you can see the military street uh, bridge in the background. This is looking south. And uh, you can see the uh, iron brackets or braces or arches, whatever you might want to call them, over the bridge. And it gives you a pretty good look at the streetcar. You can see the conductor hanging out from the rear of the streetcar. I always thought that this was the first bridge that an electric streetcar was able to go over. But as you can see from this photograph here, that's an electric streetcar going over the old swing bridge. So they found a way for uh, the electric streetcar to go across a swing bridge as well as a jackknife bridge. They ran the electric wires right uh, over the trusses uh, on this swing bridge and they found a way to connect and uh, disconnect as that bridge uh, swung back into place and as it opened up again. A lot of ingenuity here, I'm sure. And in this photograph here, you can see the swing bridge in the foreground and as you go north on Huron Avenue, if you look up our ways as we come in a little bit, you can see the streetcar uh, heading south on Huron Avenue. And if you look a little beyond that uh, north, you can see it looks like another streetcar on the other side of tracks. In this photograph, you can see uh, two streetcars as well on the tracks. Uh, that would be about at the corner of Quay and Huron. And you can see the two ladies on the right, they had just crossed the Military Street Bridge and are heading north, probably do a little bit of shopping. This photograph was taken a little bit later. You can see the automobiles uh, lined up there. Uh, you see the streetcar coming down the center, uh, heading south. And uh, I do believe there is still one horse. If you look over here on the right, I think that's a horse uh, pulling a cart of some sort. And although this postcard says Military Street looking north from Quay Street, it's actually uh, Huron Avenue looking north from Quay Street. Uh, occasionally I made mistakes on these postcards, but you can see the uh, streetcar uh, coming toward us. But something that had me stumped for a few moments is uh, when I looked at the streetcar a little bit closer. It says uh, Yosemite on it. And I don't recall any street by that name. And then I saw the SS in front of it, of course, and realized that this is one of the uh, excursion ships that docked at the foot of Grand River, or back then it was Butler Street. I imagine it was a common sight for the folks downtown to see the streetcars go by with the name of the uh, excursion ship on it. Uh, the Taj Mu being one of them, as uh, you can see here. And if there were two uh, ships in at port at the same time, such as here you see the Tajmu and the Alpina, the streetcar would display the name of the uh, ship that was supposed to depart first. The reason the name of the ship was on the streetcar at all is so the tourists, uh, as they went through town and on the other side of the bridge and wherever they might end up, even uh, further up north, uh, they didn't know the name of the streets, but they knew the name of the ship they came in on, and so they would look for that which is still a common practice today in some places. We're very fortunate to have so many photographs and uh, postcards that uh, show the streetcars in Port Huron. In this photograph here, you're looking down the center of uh, Huron Avenue, looking north. The cars look a little newer now, and uh, you can see the two streetcars. Uh, one has a car behind it. On the left there, you can see the familiar sign of the old Sperry's building. In this old photograph, uh, this was taken uh, out the window of the Union Hotel in the 300 block on the east side of Huron Avenue. And as we look down on Huron Avenue, you can see the streetcar and across the street uh, where McMorrin is today, you can see the old courthouse. And speaking of courthouses, uh, we have a good picture here in this postcard of the courthouse. And, and you can see the uh, streetcar uh, coming down Broad Street, or now McMorrin, uh, heading east. And uh, it gives you a good picture of that streetcar. Do you notice that the streetcars seem to be getting larger as uh, we go on in time? We have much more on the streetcars of Port Huron, except it won't be in this video. It'll be in the next one.